today I figured you guys could hang out with me in the shop as I do some sharpening and show you the system that I use, uh, the techniques that I use. And I wanna go over like what sharpening systems I used to use a lot, uh, what do I have. This stone is gonna suck up a lot of water. Uh, using uh, my Torment T8. Uh, this is a water stone system. Add some more. Torment is a Swedish company. Och eftersom att det är ett svenskt företag så tänkte jag, då kan vi köra den här videon på svenska istället. Right. So one thing that I've been meaning to sharpen forever are my kitchen knives. So I figured let's start with that right away. So like a clamp for the knife. So you can have this machine two different ways. You can either have the wheel going back from you or you can turn the whole thing around and have it spin towards you. I like to keep it in this position for most things. It's a pretty good angle. Just to make sure I get it. I want to make sure I have the right grit here. So one thing that's kind of interesting about this machine is that you grind down this, this stone to change the grit. So this is right here. It's 200 or 250, something like that. Push down. A couple minutes. Of course, this also means that over time, this stone actually gets smaller in diameter, which means that your angles change. But I haven't had this long enough for that to really make a difference. Um, and then when you want to change the grit again, you just switch this around and then this goes up to a thousand. Um, and then the more you do, the finer the grit becomes, up to a thousand. But let's continue our chef knife. Anyway, I'm just trying to kind of keep the nice and even pressure and, and touch the whole stone. Now to really give it that polished edge, I'm going to do some honing on this leather strap on the other side. This already has a lot of honing compound on it, but I'm going to add just a little more. So one, one down, many more to go. It's like when you sharpen like this, you get into the nice kind of zen state and you just kind of want to go from one tool to the next tool. So let's do the little hatchet. This is also Swedish. Beautiful Grensforsbruk hatchet or axe. It's a small axe. I've got a little jig for that as well here. Once you get your good angle, you can push down a bit. You don't have to be too careful. Ideally, you want to move, you know, back and forth on the stone so you don't wear down on one area. So you keep it nice and smooth. Yeah. 
This is gonna be one sharp hatchet. It's kind of funny when you're looking at this wall here, pretty much everything needs to be sharpened. These all need to be sharpened. Spoke shaves, draw knife, axes. Well, you're not gonna sharpen these on here, but hand planes. Yes, yes, yes. So I wanna take a break from sharpening for a second um, and go over what it's been like to have a smart home for the past six months or so. So when we first moved out to this house, I had a Vivint team come out here and install um, they're complete packet. So I can go in on my phone. I can get a status report of the house I can see like which doors are unlocked. Are any windows open? Um, I can actually check out visually the cameras and perhaps the one of the most fun things right away when somebody rings the doorbell I get a message on my phone like a signal and, and it says someone is at your front door uh, which is really handy actually. I mean, we don't really get a ton of visitors here uh, But every now and then, you know, you get the neighbor kids come over with fresh eggs They have chickens, which is really nice because when I'm out here in the shop I don't see or hear anything. It's like um, It's a whole different world. And of course when you're out of the house um, If I'm out shopping or, or something like that It's really nice that I can check what's going on and also that I get notified if somebody rings the front doorbell I guess the one thing is that the batteries do go out um, So I had to replace the, the batteries uh, on a few of the, the locks and the sensors um, But they're like, you know, little, little lithium-ion batteries, so it's not a big deal uh, But anyway, I'm partnering with Vivint on this video And this is a really great time, I think, to install something like this on your home You know, if you're going away on vacation or anything like that I think after having the system now for some time You're really getting used to being able to, you know, be on top of things and know what's going on through your phone uh, So yeah, I would definitely recommend it if you want to have more control and you want to be able to check your house when you're not home especially Or if you, like me, work in the <laughs> garage uh, shop a lot away from the actual house uh, but yeah there's actually a code um, right here there's a discount you can check that out and you can go to the link in the description below so now let's get back to sharpening these are lockers garden lockers that are quite dull so i'm using the grinder uh, to get these sharper So when I first got into woodworking and I needed to start sharpening primarily like chisels and plain, plain blades, uh, this was my first stone. And this is one of those cheap ones that you get like at Home Depot um, or something like that. And it basically has one rough and one finer side. And you can either use oil or water with it. Um, and it worked, you know, fine, but it's kind of limiting in the amount of choices it gives you for the grits. It's uh, pretty coarse and there's not a lot of options if you want to, you know, do even finer work. Uh, so next up I got the, uh, these Japanese water stones. And one is like 500 to 1000 and one is 1000 to 5000 grits, something like that. Um, and these, are, these work really nice. I guess the, uh, the downside with these is that you have to soak them in water first and they do take a little while to absorb. Um, and it creates kind of a mess. But if you are like prepared to do a bunch of chisels uh, or plain blades at like one time, then these work really nicely. Whereas if you actually have a chisel or something with a really big chip in it, uh, then you can, you can sit with these stones for a long time uh, without really making too much of a dent. Um, and that's when I actually used a belt sander turned upside down, really rough it out more, and of course the grinder. I liked this a lot, but the next thing I did was to get one of these Arkansas stones. Um, and use oil with that. Uh, but the thing is when you use that you get kind of kind of gets messy So I made this little wood block. This is red oak um, And the idea behind that was that the, the wood would absorb all the oil that's being used here um, And then this was all clean because this is where the leather strap was 
I got the, this bottom at like a farm store, it's like a rubber product, which really helps it, prevents it from sliding. Um, initially when I used this stone, I used to put it in the bench hook. I started doing it with, with oil and then I moved on to water and it kind of became a big mess. I don't have a bench hook currently, I need to make another one. Um, but I really did like the Japanese stones. The thing about these two is that they're pretty fragile. Um, you have to be kind of careful. And it is kind of like a big event, <laughs> sharpening them. You have to clean up, you have to get everything ready, you have to soak them, um, and then you just have to spend some time doing it. This is another piece that I have. Uh, this works really well, 1200 grit and 600 grit on the other side. Uh, what's nice about this one is that you don't actually have to use any water or oil. It works uh, you know, on its own. So I use this one uh, quite a bit and it has like a little rubber mat to so prevent it from sliding. So sometimes I use that. Uh, but I guess when you kind of get started here, uh, you, you kind of progress from one thing to another and it kind of get messy and messier. Um, and now like I have kind of progressed to the point where I've cleaned everything up a bit. These days I really use the Tormac for almost all the things, all the sharpening, except for the really rough things. You know, if there's a really big chip, um, or if it's something that, you know, you can't use that on. And these cheer, cheers as well, they, these need to be done by hand as well um, with a file. And, you know, all of these methods work. Everybody does this differently and this is just like my journey and how I have, um, you know, come to this point uh, in time. And uh, yeah, I mean, having sharp tools um, is just the difference between <laughs> enjoying yourself working and not enjoying yourself. Um, it makes a huge difference. So now I'm really trying to get into the habit of, of doing more frequent sharpening um, because since it is so convenient and easy, you know, you don't have to wait until all your chisels are dull <laughs> before you do like one big chisel uh, sharpening session. So ideally you do, a, you know, a little bit of sharpening uh, quite often. When you do that, you don't have to do as hard or as much. I suppose what I use more than anything actually is the leather honing strap right here. Um, I tend to do that almost every time before using a tool. I just, you know, hone it a little bit to, to sharpen that edge up. And that goes a pretty long way uh, towards really getting that uh, really nice edge. So over time as you use the stone, um, it gets a little bit uneven. So I'm going to be using the truing tool right now uh, to completely flatten stone. So next up, turning tools. Uh, now I've been really getting into more wood turning lately and I've been working a lot with traditional tools uh, like a rough and gouge, I have a skew chisel um, and having these tools being sharp makes just the biggest difference. Uh, this can be a little bit tricky, I think, to sharpen on like a Japanese stone. Um, there's this nice little jig for the Tormek that I'm gonna use for this one. Flipping the tool rest, because this jig goes on like this. This, I mean, some people use like the specific angle. I'm just kind of going with the existing angle and sharpening that up. I really love when you get that super shiny edge. It's so beautiful. Um, this method is, is nice because it is so gentle. Because of the water on the stone, the metal doesn't get very hot. Um, so it's a pretty gentle method of sharpening, you know, very different from the grinding. Yeah, this is sharp. Let me just do a little bit more. It's like in the past I was mostly using the carbide tip uh, turning tools and then of course you don't have to sharpen them, you just replace those bits. But there is something about these traditional ones that I really like. And now when I got my skew chisel too, like I wanna, I wanna build a collection with nice turning tools. 
Um, and some more. This is the roughing gouge. I want to get some more bowl gouges. And keep them super sharp. And it's beautiful. And here I can flip the tool wrist and have the same support for the strapping side, which is kind of nice. Oh, let's get some more compound down there. I would normally just do this freehand, but I already have the angle here. Might as well utilize it. Okay, the scoot chisel. It's a different kind of jig. It's like a Of course, my other favorite tool to keep nice and sharp is my little Mora Mora knife. Yeah, it's a little dull. You know when you go out shopping for a new tool and you're really excited about it and you may even forget to ask yourself, how in the world do I sharpen this thing? Because even though right out of the package, it may be pretty sharp, um, as you get to use it, or you know, you get a lawnmower and then you keep going over the rocks a couple too many times and it doesn't cut the grass so well anymore. Um, and you may not even have thought to yourself as you bought this thing, how in the world do I actually sharpen these blades? Um, because a dull tool is no fun. So it, that is just kind of a mindset to have. As you get new things, how do I sharpen these things? Because some things are not quite as obvious as you may think. Anyway, I um, hope you guys enjoyed this video. This was fun. I wanted to do something a little bit different, a little bit more relaxed, and really kind of just bring you guys into my world so you can see um, what my setup is like and what I use. Uh, let me know if you have any questions in the uh, comments below, and I'll see you soon. Bye!